day, my ever attentive students at home. My name is Adigbita Oluwa Yomi Dayo. I teach literature in English. For some minutes, we are going to be discussing African prose, and precisely Lonely Days by Bayo Adebowale. In the analysis of the text, we are going to be looking at these three major aspects, which are number one, plot structure, which is more or less the summary of the novel, the themes, that is the messages, number three, the author's narrative technique, also known as the style, meaning that in the course of today's lesson, the students will be able to, number one, align the plot structure of the novel, number two, list out the themes in the novel, number three, analyze the style of writing of the author. Now, to start with, we start by discussing the plot structure. The story starts with the death of Ajumobi, Yaremi's husband. According to the story, Ajumobi died a natural death after a brief illness, that is fever or malaria. Due to superstitious and traditional beliefs of the people of Kufi village, on the day Ajumobi dies, there is a hawk that is a bird on top of the roof of the house, implying that Yaremi is a witch. She is accused of turning into a hawk after killing her husband. The so-called sympathizers are not really sincere to Yaremi, but rather mock her. Yaremi's children, Segiwura and Alani, are not really bothered about their mother after the death of their father. The novel also portrays widowhood experience as very pathetic and oppressive one. There are other three widows, Fayoyi, Radeke, and Dedewe. Yaremi is able to cope with anguish, pain, isolation, and mystery associated with widowhood by devoting her time to work. Apart from farming, Yaremi's main job is dyeing tapeta clothes in indigo solution at her yard to secure ready cash. The only companion that Yaremi has after the death of her husband is Woye, her grandson. Before the end of money rights for her late husband, Ayonwale, the drummer, Olonode, the village wood carver, and Lanwa, the farmer, who is Ajumobi's half-brother, start to make amorous advances to Yaremi, but she refuses all their advances. A cap-picking ceremony is organized for Yaremi, and she refuses to pick any of the men's cap. The consequences of this action is grievous. She is abandoned. Segi, her first child, pays her mother a brief visit and encourages her mother never to bow to tradition. Alani, the last child, who has been in the city for over 10 years, also came back to the village but never fights for his mother. He only boasts around about his success in the city. Finally, Analni leaves the village with the instruction that his father's inheritance be leased out rather than given to his mother. The villagers have been instructed to avoid Yaremi like a leper. She too has prepared to pack out of the village. One is able to see how the widows, that is Dedewe, Fayoyi, and Radike, are really humiliated by traditional culture. Yaremi, a brave woman, never allows the dictates of the tradition to rule her life. I will pause here where we go for a short break. I hope you have been able to gain some things. Thank you. You are welcome back to this segment as we discuss the themes. There are various themes that could be deduced from the novel. Some of these themes are theme of oppression of women in Africa, number two, theme of superstition and African traditional beliefs, number three, theme of male dominance, number four, theme of feminism, number one, theme of oppression of women in Africa, all over Africa. Women are always at the receiving end, that is badly treated. Adebowale is able to bring this out in the characters of Yaremi and Ajumobi. 
This view is also reflected in the way the other widows, Dedewe, Radeyo, and Fayoyin, are treated. Bullying of women. Men will go out drinking with their friends, come back home drunk to abuse and threaten their wives. Polygamous problem. Ajumobi, when alive, is always threatening to marry another wife. He often says, let Siva and Diamond go into hiding whenever beautiful gold appears. I won't touch the silver and I will have nothing to do with the diamond. When gold waits patiently for me, ellipsis, end of quotation. New wife is the gold, while the silver and diamond are the old wives. Women are used as ransom. There is the story of a man named Fabotoki who gives his wife for a few weeks to a hard money lender to do whatever he likes with her pending the debt payment. This is very cruel. The Kufi women are regarded as slaves and treated more as working tools. Now the next team, team of superstition and the African traditional beliefs. The philosophical beliefs of African in life after death is revealed in the novel. There is an account of Ajumobi reassuring Yaremi in the dream that, and I quote, I'm not sleeping in heaven, Yaremi, ellipsis. Each time I touch you, Yaremi, you don't always feel it because I now carry about a weightless body, end of quotation. Another aspect of tradition is the cap picking ceremony, which is organized for widows to remarry another man by picking the man's cap. This was organized for Yaremi, but she refuses to pick any cap. Also, some deaths are classified as abominable, that is, one who takes poison or falls from the slippery palm tree or is stricken by thunder or crushed to death between falling walls or hangs himself by a rope. It is recalled that Yaremi is one not to marry an hunter, that is Ajumobi, so as not to give birth to a child with animal body. And Ajumobi is said to put an amulet on the ceiling of his house to keep away witches, wizard, ghosts, and mischief of evil spirits. All these superstitious beliefs and tradition had things that guide the life of Kufi people. The third team, team of male dominance in African society. According to the novel, women are to be seen and not heard. Men are regarded as the head of the home, while women are subjects. It is only the men that should take decisions in the homes. Women are, have no authority to query their husband's decision. A good example is the cap picking ceremony. Yaremi is not given the opportunity to choose a man of her choice if at all she wants to marry. The last theme, theme of feminism. Feminism is a social theory or political movement that supports women having equal rights as men. Adebowale is able to achieve this through the character of Yaremi. Yaremi rejects the leverate marriage. Leverate is the compulsory marriage of a widow to a brother of her deceased husband. I will stop here while we go for a short break. Thank you. Don't go away. You are welcome back to this segment. In this segment, we are going to be discussing the author's style of writing. This is also known as the narrative technique. It involves the following. Number one, language. The type that Adebowale uses is Nigerian English. Example is, it reflects local coloration of English. Instances of this coloration of English are, number one, I quote, let's bury our heads deeper into the aha and shake our heads jubilantly, end of quote. Then another one, I quote, I will blow the noses of my foes loud like the whistle, punch their faces brutally like ripe breadfruits, end of quote. These are the utterances of Ajumobi and his friends when they are drunk with wine. 
The next narrative technique is the use of idioms and uh, proverbs. This is effectively used by Adebowale to showcase the African culture and setting. An instance is, and I quote, the water jar has broken and the content spilled on the bare floor. All is over. End of quotation. This proverb announces the death of a Ajumobi. The next narrative technique is a mixture of Yoruba and standard English. One could see the fact that anytime any of the character wants to express surprise, they could switch to the Yoruba language. Examples of this code switching are, I quote, Wham, wham, the can will circle and its mark will show, end of quotation. Another example, I quote, Amala or Pandediam, ellipsis, tasty ebolo, end of quote. Then the next one, I quote, Taloga Juloba, end of quote. These are the mixture of Yoruba English with a standard English. The next narrative technique that is used by Adebowale is the use of songs. The pleasurable song of a Yaremi and Woye whenever they are beating Tafeta. Another example of use of song is the pathetic song of Radike, one of the widows. And I quote, if Evan was like going to the market in the morning and returning home in the evening, I would have followed my husband and run errands for him. End of quotation. The next narrative technique is the use of incantations. Adebowale uses this effectively to portray African culture. For instance, and I quote, Whatever command is issued out to Ogbo, Ogbo must confirm. What is issued out to Ogbo, Ogbo must accept. The divinity grants all lives' requests and all lives' wishes of the gentle Camelo. Ellipsis, end of quote. This incantation is rendered by Ajumobi when he is teasing his wife, Yaremi. Another narrative technique is the use of figures of a speech. Example is metaphor. A orc hovering in the sky, tall down fiercely. This way, the little aeroplane of heaven, the grey-coloured owner of the incinerator. So this is a very good metaphoric uh, expression. Another one, metaphor, is Yaremi also tells the men that come to come to propose to her that she is not a napkin or a rag to clean up mess with. She is not a music calabash for the clumsy fingers of drummers. The strands of her head are not for grumpy clouds of ruffians and so many other figurative uh, expressions. All these metaphorical expressions and uh, narrative techniques are used by Adebowale in his narration. Thanks for listening and